Tesla versus Enphase. They are two of the biggest manufacturers today in the residential space. And we've said it before that Tesla, they have pretty much taken over as the industry standard over the past couple of years when it comes to batteries. But Enphase is creating some buzz with their new 10C battery system and the release of their new IQ meter collar. Both of these manufacturers are going in the right direction of simplifying the installation but how do these two solutions stack up in the real world? Also, we do talk about price ranges in this video to help give you a ballpark on expected cost. And for those new to the channel, welcome. My name is Zach. I've been in the residential solar industry for 10 years. And here on this channel, we talk about solar, batteries, and do comparisons like this to hopefully make your life easier. So let's get started. All right, so first we're gonna talk about the core specs for each battery option, which includes the capacity, the power output, and the warranty. If you're trying to simplify these battery comparisons, these are really the three performance metrics that matter the most outside of price, of course. First is energy capacity, and this is measured in kilowatt hours. I always use this analogy that this is essentially the size of your gas tank, how much energy the battery can store. The more kilowatt hours, the better. Second is continuous power output, and this is measured in kilowatts. This is our battery's horsepower and tells us how quickly the battery can discharge. I kind of think of this like top speed. It is very, very common that these two numbers get confused since well, they sound similar, kilowatts and kilowatt hours, but in all reality, that energy capacity in kilowatt hours is probably the more important number of the two, just because it tells us how long the battery can power our home. The third metric is warranty, how long the manufacturer stands behind the product. This one's subject to opinion on how important it truly is, but it's one that gets asked about all the time, so I figured I'd throw it in as a core metric. Starting with capacity, Powerwall 3, that offers a capacity of 13 and a half kilowatt hours with the Enphase 10C, that comes in at 10 kilowatt hours. Tesla gets the win here with 35% more energy storage per unit. Next, let's talk power. When it comes to raw power, the Powerwall 3 really leads the pack in the industry today. It delivers 11 and a half kilowatts of continuous output, which is strong on its own, but the real headline is that surge power for load start, which is rated at 185 LRA. LRA, that stands for locked rotor amps, and it's a key number that you can find on your AC unit's label. It measures the AC's inrush current at startup. 185 is massive. That's enough to handle a five ton AC unit. And honestly, I've never seen a single AC unit on any of my projects that exceed that. Most are in that 100 to 150 LRA range, at least here in Arizona. So what does this all mean for you? In almost all cases, one Powerwall 3 is enough to back up your entire home, including your air conditioning. Tesla actually says about 95% of US single family homes can achieve whole home backup with a single battery unit. And it's clear that they intentionally designed this product with that in mind. Now let's compare that to Enphase. The 10C offers 7.08 kilowatts of continuous output on the load start side, Enphase rates this at a 90 LRA, which is about half of what Tesla offers. Ultimately, a single Enphase 10C probably won't cover your entire home, especially if you have a bigger home. In most cases, it's going to be reserved for critical loads, lights, refrigeration, outlets, and maybe your AC unit. Due to the lower power rating of a single unit, I'd probably recommend checking out two or more of these 10C batteries, especially if you want whole home backup. Now warranties, both systems use that lithium iron phosphate chemistry, which is known for durability and safety. Tesla offers a 10 year warranty with unlimited cycles and guarantees a 70% capacity retention. Enphase does go further here, offering a 15 year warranty or 6,000 cycles with a 60% capacity guarantee. That longer time horizon can certainly give consumers extra peace of mind. So on paper here, Tesla, they lead in raw capacity and power output while Enphase, they have the advantage on warranty, but it's not quite apples to apples. I mean, one Enphase 10C is essentially 75% of one Powerwall 3, but I still feel it's a pretty fair comparison. As we'll see later though, there is much more to choosing a battery system than just the spec sheet. If you are in the US and you wanna have a conversation to see if either battery option makes sense for you, book a discovery call with me and I can directly assist with getting you the information that you're looking for. And if you aren't in an area that I service here in the US, I won't waste your time. I'll let you know beforehand, but the call is completely free, zero pressure, and takes just 15 minutes. Next, let's talk about the inverter architecture for both battery systems, since the inverter that you choose is also a very important part of your solar installation. The Powerwall 3 and the Enphase 10C are very different when it comes to the types of inverters that they use within their system. System. The Enphase 10C is fully AC coupled, AC being alternating current, meaning it pairs directly with an AC power source, 
like a solar inverter. Now in phase, they're known for their microinverter solution, which a lot of homeowners are familiar with and they really like, and that is gonna be your go-to pairing with their battery system. Now here are some advantages of microinverters. One, each panel has its own inverter, so if one fails, the rest keep producing. Two, there's no central inverter, which means less risk of full system downtime due to inverter failure. And three, they're great for roofs with a lot of shading or complex layouts. And while microinverters do reduce the risk that comes with panel or inverter level failures, when you integrate a battery, these systems will still have critical components like combiner boxes, battery inverters, and gateways that could still technically act as a central point of failure. So it's not truly failure proof, just more resilient in certain ways. The big disadvantage of an AC coupled installation like Enphase is the price point. You are incurring the cost of both the battery system as well as the micro inverters in this case. Now the Tesla Powerwall 3 is natively DC coupled, DC being direct current, meaning it pairs directly with a DC power source like the solar panels themselves. Side note, the Powerwall 3 can technically be DC or AC coupled, but in this section, we will only talk about the DC coupled version of this system. The Tesla Powerwall 3 has an integrated hybrid inverter. Yes, it's a string inverter and it's built into the battery assembly itself. This inverter system, it supports both the solar panels and the battery and that's where it gets its hybrid name because it serves two purposes. Since the inverter itself is inside the same unit, this also saves on wall space and really just simplifies the installation. I just think of it like a big inverter that also happens to have 13 and a half kilowatt hours of storage. The inverter has six MPPTs built in, which is just a really technical way to say that you can break the system up into six different zones or substrings to maximize the different sections of your roof. Say you have a south, an east, a west, and a shaded section, you could technically zone all of these off so they perform independently and don't impact each other negatively. Tesla's inverter warranty is the same as the battery, 10 years, since it's all in one unit, and phases microinverters come with a separate 25 year warranty. Both options are great, but when it comes down to microinverters versus string inverters, the argument is really just based off of your roof, your goals, and which of the two really fit your needs the best. So both the Enphase and Tesla have really built their value on being an all-in-one ecosystem. And when I talk about ecosystems, that includes both the hardware and that software that they offer. And with software, software is a very important piece to consider, especially with a home energy system, because this is gonna be your direct user experience with this product. The software is that extension of the hardware. And the best part of it all is that over time, it will continue to improve and make the user experience even better. Now they both make great apps and they both have demo versions of their app that you can mess around with and get the full experience of both of their platforms. You're gonna find all of the critical information that you need as well as your past performance metrics such as energy history or savings. Additionally, they have all of the customization that you need for your battery settings, your utility rate structure and so on. Tesla's app is a bit more simplistic and doesn't offer that same depth of information that you might find within Enphase's software. They do both have time-based operating modes that will maximize utility savings. They both have the self-powered operating modes that will maximize grid independence and they both have a storm watch feature that will protect the home from weather related outages. So you're pretty much covered either way on the battery behavior settings. I do have several videos on my channel where I walk through the Tesla app itself. I haven't done one for the Enphase app for their battery systems just because there hasn't been a lot of demand for it. But if that's something you do want to see, let me know and I can put something together. I won't do a deep dive here on this video, but if you are considering the Tesla system, check out those videos and you'll learn all the tips and tricks and everything you need to know. If if you're considering the Enphase system, I do recommend going and checking out their demo version of the app. For Tesla, their overall user interface is probably the best looking in my opinion. It's a very simple app to understand when you're looking at energy stats and checking out that real time power flow with solar generation, battery state of charge, and how much your home is consuming. With Enphase, I still do like their user interface, but not quite as much as Tesla. However, the information that Enphase does provide is a bit more granular, especially when you get into the hardware vitals and device statuses, you can actually check in on each individual microinverter, battery, system controller, and so on. Enphase does also offer a web-based version of their software, so if you like being able to see all of that from your desktop, 
that's a perk of Enphase that Tesla does not have. Now, if you have a Tesla vehicle and you opt for a Powerwall, the energy side of their app does have seamless vehicle charging integration and information sharing. So like I said, if you have a Tesla car, it might be a no brainer to go down this route. Tesla also does offer a universal EV charger that works with Tesla and non-Tesla vehicles. And while Enphase doesn't manufacture vehicles like Tesla, they do have their own IQ EV charger that can directly integrate within the ecosystem and the Enphase app. Quick favor to ask, if you're getting any value from today's video and you'd like to support the channel, please drop me a thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. Now, a big factor that might affect your battery of choice is the installation, the necessary equipment, and the aesthetics that come with all of this. The most notable addition to the Enphase ecosystem that came out with this 10C rollout is the introduction of Enphase's IQ Meter Collar, which is a meter socket adapter or MSA. This is where Tesla and Enphase have some common ground. Enphase has this IQ Meter Collar, Tesla has their backup switch, which is their version of this meter socket adapter. And for those completely new to this, meter socket adapters have become an important trend that battery manufacturers are moving towards to continue to make the installation of batteries even easier and more cost effective. This likely should be an entire video on itself, but let's talk about their significance real quick. Skip to this timestamp here on the screen if you start to get bored. With a meter socket adapter, the goal is to eliminate the need for a backup subpanel, which we often call a critical loads panel, and all of the labor costs that come with installing that and rewiring your home's electrical setup. Real quick though, let's call out a couple of important things on meter socket adapters. First is terminology. Let's get on the same page here. Meter socket adapters may be called meter collars or MSA. They are all fundamentally the same thing, so for the rest of this video, for simplicity, I will call them meter callers. Second, and I get this question a bunch, meter callers are just another version of a battery system controller or gateway, which all battery manufacturers have their own name for as well. These pieces of equipment all act as the battery system's intelligent transfer switch. It knows when to switch your home from grid to battery power and back. They often get called the brain of the system. Now, meter callers do the same job of gateways and system controllers, but they come with a much smaller footprint and less installation complexity. And the third thing is not every scenario is a good fit for a meter caller. In order to get the full value of the solution, a couple of things really need to be true. One of these things, the meter caller of choice needs to be approved by your utility to go behind their meter. This is where Tesla does have a head start. Their meter caller, the backup switch, it's been around longer, so it does have a longer list of approved utilities. But Enphase is no small operation, so I expect their coverage to grow rapidly since Tesla really has helped pave the way. In my home state here in Arizona, all of our major utilities have approved of both options, which is really encouraging to see. If you'd like to see both Enphase and Tesla's list of meter caller approved utilities, check out the links in the description below. However, regardless of utility approval, you can absolutely still use the meter caller in a separate meter can for your installation like shown. But depending on your electrical setup, this may not save much on cost. Another thing to point out is since the goal of a meter caller is to eliminate the need for that critical loads panel and all of the cost that comes with it, the use of a meter caller is really designed for a whole home backup, meaning all of the loads in your home can be energized by the battery system during an outage. Now, due to the lower power output of a 10C battery, then I'd expect that two of the 10Cs would probably be a more appropriate pairing for most homes to achieve this whole home backup threshold. And obviously, by needing to purchase two batteries, this does drive up your cost. Powerwall has a continuous output that's about 60% higher than the 10C, so it can hit that goal of whole home backup with relative ease in most cases. And the last thing to point out is that these meter callers are rated for 200 amps, so if you do have a 400 amp service, then it wouldn't be compatible. Now you might be thinking, why should I care? I'm not the one installing the battery. Does it really matter how complex it is or how long it takes to get installed? The main two things are cost 
in appearance. Labor and materials, they are one of the largest line items in a battery installation, and by simplifying the process, that's going to lead to savings. And then as far as appearance, I know this part is subjective. You might not care how the battery looks on your wall, but space is always a concern, and the less boxes and less components we have to install means we're more likely to actually be able to fit the battery system where you want it. Remember this too, the pictures that you see on Enphase's website or Tesla's website is not always a very accurate representation of how the install really looks. Now for Enphase, I think they took a big step in the right direction in streamlining their installation and the aesthetics of that installation, but the 10C is still not a small battery. Enphase is fitting their 10 kilowatt hour capacity in a footprint that's two feet wide, about two and a half feet tall and almost 15 inches thick. Tesla, they're fitting their 13 and a half kilowatt hours of capacity, which includes the solar inverter, in a footprint that's two feet wide, about three and a half feet tall, and just eight inches thick. And due to this difference in battery thickness, the Powerwall 3 will fit quite a bit better on a sidewall of your garage than the 10C. Regardless of all of this, both installs, they look clean, but I think it's really hard to compete with Tesla in pure aesthetics, which may or may not matter to you. Now let's talk about cost for a turnkey installation. The pricing ranges, they're gonna vary based on install complexity, your location, and who's doing the work. This is not an official quote, this is just a ballpark range that I've seen based on multiple installers. For Tesla, you should expect a fully installed Powerwall 3 to run between the $10,000 and $17,000 range. I know, big range. That includes the battery, the integrated solar inverter, and all of those other necessary components but it does not include your solar panels, of course. The first Powerwall 3 is always the most expensive. If you're adding more than one, the cost per battery should drop, especially if they're using Tesla's DC expansion packs instead of another full Powerwall. For Enphase, I expect the market range to sit between $13,000 and $18,000 for the 10C. This includes the battery, the combiner six, and the meter collar, but does not include your microinverters or your solar panels. Important to note as well, if you plan on adding this to your existing Enphase system, your installer will need to replace your existing combiner box for their new Combiner 6. Just like with Powerwall, additional batteries will taper down in cost per unit. Like I said, I know these are rather large ranges, so let's discuss two things that might cause your project to be on the more expensive side with any battery option. First, retrofit installations on existing solar systems will cost more than new solar and battery installs. So if that's your situation, expect the cost to be on the higher end of the range. Second is any complicated or unique install that includes long wire runs, tight equipment locations, or any extra electrical work, these could all increase your cost. Don't forget, if you are in the market for a solar and a battery system, book that discovery call below to see if I can help you get the information you're looking for. And one final comment that I'll make is no matter which route you go, Enphase or Tesla, you are getting a really quality product. Both of these manufacturers they have great reputations with their installers for a reason. Now, if you are curious on how the Powerwall 3 stacks up against the Franklin A Power 2, which is another great option to consider, check out this video here on the screen. Thanks again for watching, and we will see you all next time.